Shalom. These are exciting days, the most exciting time to be alive. And these are the days when the Lord is cutting time short if people of love will cooperate. So I need all people of uh, the pride of the Lion of Zion, which is the name of a family of the Lion. I need all people to raise your hands unto your Lord God love because he says unto each and every one of you and to all people who will have their love on as a little child. He says, I will be your God and I am your God and you will be and are my people and all of you shall know me from the least to the greatest. Uh, all not committing unforgivable sins of letting their love die out. Watch the video, The Deathbed Confession of Anton LaVey, for it is true that all calling upon our beloved love shall be saved. And in this hour, it is time for the great reformation, the great restitution of Acts 3.21, the time when the Lord God is saying, I will write my law and my love upon the hearts of all those of my pride and beyond, and none shall ever need to even be taught of me, saith our beloved. For once you understand that his love is unconditional, there is nothing more that you could really learn about he who is the hero of heroes, the majesty of majesties, our icon of icons. So welcome in the name of love, love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace to all people under the, the pride flag. Blessed are those of love's greatest passion who understand that there's a wisdom of the head and there's a wisdom of the heart. Uh, and when it is love, it becomes the highest achievable wisdom available for all wanting to shine as uh, our rising star of stars, our foretold sun of righteousness, uh, his love shining as, as the sun uh, that Isaiah 60 predicted. For he alone is our beloved, the blessed and the adored, who is now arising with love's most joyful healing under his whitest wings of our most regal eagle of the eons, who is also our whitest fluttering dove of love in the same way as our loving lamb of peace is also our roaring lion of Zion, who's now calling everyone of his pride under this flag to well understand that all people of love need to stand under this same flag of the rainbow of hope and promise spoken forth in the book of Genesis. And because our majesty of majesties, uh, he doesn't want any more stupid sheep. Uh, instead, he wants absolutely all people, regardless of their orientations, uh, to be part of his most beloved family, the pride, the great pride, for all of those having their love uh, floating around like a little child. The Christ said, we must be born again. And as our roaring lion of Zion, as he now roars unto his beloved family, his pride, they need to let go of all condemnation that you have put there wrongly on yourself or received from others wrongly when the Lord God has never condemned you by the letter of the word of love. And so uh, by his word, he says, I will forgive all iniquity. And regardless if people think this is a sin, that is a sin, uh, the so-called streets of the world, they condemn uh, the, the gays, homosexuals, uh, because they have a different sin than they do. The strays and uh, gay, uh, the straights, uh, most of them are just a bunch of porn addicts walking dildos with ears, and yet they condemn others for their sin because they don't have the same kind of hidden secret sin that they do. If that is not the highest heights of uh, hypocrisy, I do not know which. So these are the days to let go of all condemnation uh, that has not come from love's unapologetic truth because all is forgiven. And know that such adoration from our great beyond is always given to us, all of us, who are people of love,
by our Most High Lord without any repentance whatsoever. The gifts and the calling of God are always given without repentance. And God makes no junk. We are all made in the image of love. And when his pride becomes truthful to new spiritual truths, they'll never need to be hiding who they are or never shall they need to be ashamed. And by the spirit of prophecy, Isa Yeshua Jesus is now reaffirming the dignity of all loving people who have all been created totally equal to one another, regardless of any beliefs whatsoever, and in spite of any sexuality that they may or may not embrace. It is not what we do for him, it is what he has done for us, and he is setting us all free. As long as we commit not blasphemy of the Holy Spirit to let our love go right out, that's suicide because he is love. And uh, if we uh, let him go out in us, then we can never have the light that we need to light our way evermore as his mangels of love. For all the creation has been groaning with great expectation for the revelation of who we are. Jesus said we are gods. I tell you truly, the Bible says that we shall be as the, the angels, neither male nor female. So it really is irrelevant what we do while we're in this flesh. Um, and it is foretold that the glory of the Lord's latter house shall be greater than that of the former, because the first is last, and we who have been last have been made higher uh, than the angels according to the word of God. And so know that it doesn't matter what we do or think. The only thing matters is if we keep our love alive moving forward as a child. And because all of our own righteousness and all of our former understandings, the Bible says, is as filthy rags when compared to the spotless purity of Emmanuel's bottomless love, hope, and faith that he has now given freely unto all believing in his forgiveness so that all loving people of the Lord could never ever be accused, uh, so that the Lord could never be accused of being a respecter of his creation by loving some more than others. This is the height of insanity and the religion to live by now in, as the kingdom age arises is the truth of Romans 3.10 that there is no good man, no, not even one. We are all evil, and we are all good, and most people are pretty good, uh, but we all have a little devil sitting on our shoulder, but we are forgiven for all sin, the Lord says, except to let our light of love go out. And know that since the unity of everyone has now been given unto us, by our, our carpenter of the ages, word of Malachi 3, 1, that he would send forth his message of his word unto his people of love who has their light on. And uh, so now these are the days of Elijah, the days of Shiloh, the days of the latter day Daniel, who I am. Days when it is obvious that his everlasting transcendental love shall now prepare the Lord's very own way, just as he foretold by his spirit of prophecy. So let the wise know that his living word of unconditional love, it's an absolute, it's absolutely an absolute for all those not letting their childlike verb and motion love to wax cold so that they would perish as Christ says. And all sin will and has been forgiven even before we commit it. Uh, because he says he would throw it as far away from him into the sea of forgetfulness. And in these days it is said in Matthew twelve thirty one that only the unforgivable sin cannot be forgiven. The problem is people haven't understood that what that is. I am here to tell you because I am the Elijah of the one candlestick of Zechariah uh, three, not the two candlesticks of Zechariah. Uh, of Revelation 11. Those are the two returning uh, original Elijah and Moses and nothing but death would flow at that point if that comes. But all prophecy has been conditional. And so in these days, uh, people need to understand that it is the sin of fools uh, that will let their faith and love die uh, by 
committing that unforgivable sin, letting our love go right out, because all those who love are born again of God and know him because he is love, capital L. That is the secret name of Christ from Mark, Mark 4. And every knee will bow only unto that name, uh, the name of love written by John the Beloved. Uh, it will not be the name of Jesus. Every name will confess love. And the name of Jesus was just a distortional, false, um, distortional Christ uh, whom Putin serves, uh, the false Jesus, who th he thinks will forgive him for his unloving ways when the Bible clearly shows him being thrown into the pit along with the false prophet because of his uh, unforgivable sin that cannot be forgiven. So the real Lord cannot and will not uh, forgive uh, such murderous people who, who have become possessed by an inner raging lust for power and hatred that leads their way. So as it is written, there has never been any heavenly condemnation who has their love light on as a child, uh, who is walking in the spirit of love as it is written. So let all of all people under this flag, uh, let their loving souls now embrace this kingdom age word uh, of the utter beneficence of our Lord's greatest magnificence as our beloved, uh, he pours out his love freely upon absolutely all flesh standing under this flag and every other flag upon the nation of uh, uh, the world's nations. And these are the days it is now exactly as Hebrews 8 foretold, because all former faith understanding is now passe and shall blow away as smoke. For Paul wrote that in the days when you hear the words, I will be your God, you will be my people, that faith will be totally obsolete uh, as it is written, since our Lord of love is now offering unto absolutely all people the removal of the former distortional veil uh, of the, the condemnation that has been between us and each other, so that we ourselves can become the greatest pride of his loving forgiveness, so that we can have all of our former shame and guilt, every single one of you under the great, uh, the great pride flag, and have all of your, your guilt removed. We should not uh, be guilty about any of our sin because it is all forgiven according to the Lord. And uh, so if people will not cast away their shame and their guilt, they can never become the people that they were meant to be. I tell you truly, truly, we must leave the confines of the box that we have put ourselves into and the Lord. For uh, he has never been the, the Lord God of uh, mainstream religion. Uh, the God of this world preached uh, is a God of condemnation when he has never been that. And so in these days, it's time to cast away by our perfect love, um, uh, cast away all of our fears and our shame. And you can do that only upon this Latter-day Mountain, of Isaiah 2, Micah, uh, Micah 4, and it is the um, wrongly perceived marriage supper of the Lamb of Isaiah 25. That is why the Lord said of Elijah, who was to come, he said, who will come and feed the master's household meat, a delicacy thereof, while the master is still away. He, that was a riddle he asked of his people in Matthew 24, right after he had told them that Elijah surely would come forth and restore all things before his return. So blessed are all those of love, knowing that there's absolutely nothing in the world so irresistibly contagious as laughter and uh, and the awakened love that uh, of, of people that formerly had hard hearts uh, that becomes a flame with passion. He's going to spew out of his mouth all those not passionate about love because then we're part of the walking dead. So come out of the walking dead if you're amongst them, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Because if you're in that land, your love, instead of a noun, it has become only a, a, a instead of a verb, it only becomes a noun and it can go nowhere. It's dead faith. 
and faith that is not in motion is dead. So blessed are all those of love's passion of flame by our, our uh, by your own loving hopes that are now dawn, dawning in this time so that you can receive the eternal springs within your lives uh, with our beloved's most uh, radiant transformation within us if we will believe his, his embrace is there for us. And in these days, uh, such transformation will cause people's inner warmth to begin exploding like summer under the sun. And blessed, therefore, are all people who envisions a society uh, in which diverse sexual and gender identities are included, uh, all are included within his promise uh, to be the Lord God of all mankind. Jeremiah 32, 27 proclaims this, and this is what we have forgotten. So it's time to value every single life. Every single life is important. Um, and every single life matters. Every single person under this flag and every single person under every flag. And so shall all this be as a result of love's wishes, our king of love to promote and to ma maintain dignity amongst the peoples of his love, his brethren, uh, and to promote the human freedoms and human rights for all who are keeping their love alive as a child since many loveless people will be saying, Lord, Lord, I believe. Uh, he's going to say, it doesn't matter. You let your love light go out. And so they f shall therefore be cast into the outer darkness due to their spiritual suicide of letting the Lord God's light within them to be extinguished by their er very own unloving foolishness. And within that blackest blackness shall there be much wailing and gnashing of teeth for unloving people. Uh, and uh, that will cause this to be brought upon themselves by such suicidal loveless strife or loveless gaze. It does not matter. Uh, what does matter is the love. We must be born again of love and we must have our love moving as a child. So blessed are all those believing love's gospel truth that absolutely nobody is useless in this world who lightens the burdens of others. For in these days of Elijah, people must begin trying to be good, good neighbors that will easily forgive one another uh, as they treat others by the golden rule that they wish to be treated by as well. So that all people of the world can stop judging one another unfairly as all choose to walk in peace and just live humbly as we all show mercy uh, for others as we work for justice for all actions, um, for such is a demonstration of love that comes forth unto all yielding unto the spirit of love. It is the sweetest fruit thereof. In fact, Jesus uh, often said that his followers could be identified by their loving actions, since love alone is the greatest of all commandments. For love does not condemn one another, and love does not diminish others, since love doesn't seek to deny justice or dignity or safety unto anyone. Nor has our Lord of love ever suggested that anyone is unworthy uh, of him, his love or beyond the reach of love whom he is, aside from the putrid Putin uh, who has cut the earth a new one, rendering poor Russia into the biggest sphincter asshole of the world. But the good news is there is a weapon in this day, a psychological weapon. It is indisputably that which cuts time short. Uh, only prophecy can cut time short because if we believe it, why go there if it's a terrible future? And Rasputin, uh, the Russian prophet, has World War III prophecy for the Russian people. So please send out that uh, prophecy knowing that Armageddon will probably never come, and the worst of the worst probably never will, if we will arise and do what the Lord desires. For it is written, this will be considered in the latter days, Jeremiah 30, 24. The Lord says, I will return my terrifying anger and stop all the world's craziness if my people will give me the desire of his heart, which is just to be loving, caring people. Uh, he does not ask any more than that. And so in these days, Putin is foreseen as the Bible's unloving 
Antichrist, uh, who is the great bearer of uh, um, arising in Daniel 7, 5. And in between his fangs, he's chewing on three ribs, Crimea and the last two he just annexed. And in these days of Daniel 11, 6, that says this would happen in the latter days, it says so. Now the king of the north has fully invaded the king of the south. And it's foretold he will at first lose, go back to Moscow, come back at them a second time before going all the way unto an Armageddon that does not have to happen. Uh, so these are the days when uh, uh, people must remind Russia uh, that their leader is he who is thrown into hell's most fervent fires, exactly as Revelation 20, verse 10 says. For uh, that man has been just like a desensitized frog that becomes a uh, dead duck in a cooked goose because he was put into a pot with a real low flame, low enough that he couldn't tell it was getting too hot, it was too gradual, so that he never jumps out. Uh, and in such a case, such an insane person, they become nothing but like a stupid little toady uh, who never realized that it was slowly being cooked by the unloving ways that Putin has embraced, like his warmest uh, bank blanket. And so let the wise know that uh, it is of him that it is written that he will desire not even the company of a female. Doesn't mean he is gay, but could he be? <laughs> but the truth is, he has a greater lust for power than any sexual urges that that man has ever felt before. So let the wise know that the Bible declares in 32.27, Jeremiah 32.27, that the Almighty is clearly the loving Lord of always over every single person ever born. And nor could it ever be denied that the Old Testament is clearly obsolete in these days, exactly as Muhammad predicted. Muhammad said the same thing as Paul in Hebrews 8. Uh, Muhammad said, the day is coming when my people will belong to another. It sounds like Islam. It'll happen because of a book proving God's mercy, Jeremiah 31. Uh, and they will be called by a name, Chrislam, which is Israel's brand new name because they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3, for the literal kingdom age covenant that has now been given exactly as Jeremiah 1.10, Haggai 2.2 2 said, to tear down all distortionality of past understandings of the Lord's love so we might shine as the stars. And in these days, these are days to realize that the Old Testament prescribed the death penalty, the severest penalty for crimes not only of murder, but for lesser crimes like attacking or cursing a parent. Kidnapping, failure to confine a dangerous animal resulting in death. Uh, death would be pronounced for witchcraft, sorcery, sex with an animal, doing work on the Sabbath, incest, adultery, all homosexual acts, all prostitution by any priest's daughter, by any blasphemy, the price would be death, and any false prophecy, the price would be death, perjury in capital uh, cases would bring the same thing, uh, along with false claims of a woman's virginity at the time of her marriage, she would be killed too. So let the wise now understand that the richest beauty of the kingdom aid spirituality that is now arising by the spirit of love is that our beloved Lord of all people is calling all LGBT people uh, to proclaim the utter truth and beauty of his, his love's unconditional nature over all mankind, since he is now bringing forth the redemption of all, any sexual brokenness, if only people will obey Buddha and let go of that shit. Uh, I love that t-shirt. I got that t-shirt. But uh, this is important to repair the sexual brokenness of the lives of all people walking by the divine uh, brightest light of love's uh, hope eternal. And know that for all LGBT souls, they, all they really need 
is God's truth of his eternal love and forgiveness uh, and the understanding that we all deserve to know the most loving compassion of Christ since the deepest depths of his bottomless love can only be fully experienced in a climate of complete openness unto love, honesty, uh, where we uh, attain a vulnerability. Uh, and his spirit of prophecy also stresses that openness may not completely disarm the prejudicial uh, existence of much spiritual racism created by mainstream religion. Uh, but it is a good place to start anyways, since the equality of the Lord's love um, has given all of us a means much more uh, uh, it means much more than just passing laws. This is a, a, a equality of our hearts. And understand that the struggle of unloving racism has always really been won in the hearts and minds of obedient people who will submit unto Christ's forgiveness uh, that is over all of our differences. Because if loving gays had to wait for other people uh, in order for them to be validating uh, their existence, uh, then it would mean that such foolish people would be short changing themselves. Let God be true and every single man a liar. Um, so it's imperative that everyone's freedom and human rights are, are all respected of all people all over the world because all lives matter. So that our golden age can come forth anew upon the great white cloud of Revelation 14 because these are the days when the Lord has sent forth his everlasting gospel, the flying scroll into the world. And I am that writer. Uh, who has eyes red and dull of wine, Genesis 49, 12, the alcoholic of the vision of God. And this has been written plainly on the tablets, Habakkuk 2, 2, so all those who hear it might run and take action because the wheat and the tares cannot grow together any longer. It is time to fight Russia with spiritual warfare. So let all people pray for all of those um, in Russia since the new Vlad the Impaler, he, uh, his, his views uh, of the rainbow pride is that uh, he sees all the desires of all of you people as being, in his words, monstrous and on the verge of a crime against humanity, as Putin said in 2013 when he signed his anti-gay propaganda law. This man is the enemy of every single, uh, all people under this flag, because within a time, times, and a half a time, as the Word of God proclaims in Daniel 11 and 12, this man will have his people turn and exterminate like cockroaches his vision of the lowest people on earth, which he has said is you because he has a false God that is not a God of love. There's no love left in that man. His hands are filled with the blood of innocence, and there is no holy water that could purge away that. I don't care if you burnt the hell right out of all any water, uh, you're still going to end up with a, a, a mess of garbage that he's dishing up as slop to everyone who will feed at the tables of his twisted religion of hatefulness and racist racism. For he is the viper of all vipers and the enemy of mankind. So people help me and help uh, Russia. Please uh, circulate these uh, videos because in the end, ignorance will become the very gravestone of millions who will not embrace the Lord's latter-day message of hope that come from the great white throne right now for all of you. Amen, and I love you all.